stuff in the morning. Morning, Brad. How you doing? I'm good. How are you today? Well, not too bad. Really excited about the show and to see what uh, what 2021 here brings us. Right. Sounds good. Welcome to Fabtech. Thank you very much. So, Simpax booth design is uh, quite different this year than previous years. You want to explain a little bit about uh, the inspiration behind the design of the booth this year? Well, absolutely, Brad. One of the things that we did is we wanted to highlight one of the types of presses that we have that is actually going to be um, the cornerstone of our XR technology. So what you're seeing up here and across in the back is an actual image of a press. So as close as we could possibly do with, uh, with a booth design, we made a press from the front, the back, and the side. And then of course, what we're gonna be doing for our customers, we're gonna be showing the um, IIoT on uh, the XR technology and um, interfacing with all the different customers throughout the show. Excellent, sounds good. So you mentioned, Stefan, that the booth also highlights presses specific to the uh, to the EV market. Uh, Metal Forming Magazine and Simpac hosted a couple of webinars earlier this year specific to the EV market uh, and how stampers need to uh, prepare for the upcoming changes uh, that will occur with production ramp up for EVs. Can you explain a little bit about which press systems are preferred for EV production and uh, has the forecasted data that you provided during the webinars proven to be accurate in regards to production opportunities and challenges for metal plumbing companies? Well, that's definitely a mouthful, Brad. Let me it's tell you, lot, I mean, that's a lot of, that's a lot, that's a big question. <laughs> so why don't we first of all talk about the EV market, what type of presses we're offering, sure. okay? Um, first of all, as you see here, we have the CX series press, which we tried to mimic here in our booth. Right. We also have the MC2 series press, okay, which is a slightly bigger but a monoblock frame press that is also for the EV industry. Both of these, um, both of these press systems are for small to medium parts. So when you look at a, um, a battery tray, so a big battery tray, that's for larger parts. But inside that battery tray, I have the little small cylinders and the containers for all the battery, um, uh, for, for the battery components okay. themselves. All of those would be made off the MC2 or the CX series press. Now the bigger battery trays, those would be made off of the DTE or the DTL series presses. You can also obviously use the servo presses for that. Now, you asked a little bit about um, what, uh, what we see in the market and how we see things moving forward. Well, that's actually a very interesting question because um, you know Jamie Bartholomew, my inside sales and marketing manager and myself, we have hosted two EV webinars so far. We did that all during the pandemic um, that was discussing how we saw the EV market increasing over the next five, 10, 15, even 20 years. And at the time that we put this presentation together and with all the current data that we had at the time, we saw some pretty massive growth. And to be quite honest, deep down inside, I thought, nah, maybe that's a little bit aggressive. But when I'm looking at companies such as Volkswagen and General Motors, just to name two, that have now all of a sudden stated that between 2030 and 2035, they're gonna have their entire portfolio go over to EV vehicles. When I start seeing that, I almost think that the actual curve that we were showing for EV production, okay, whether for stampers or for actual volumes for cars, is maybe a little bit on the conservative side. Now, of course, the one thing that we also have to take into context, it's not just the fact that customer, uh, the companies wanna build EV vehicles. It's really easy to build it, but you still have to be able to charge it. So infrastructure also has to be increased. Okay, that's a complete different ball of wax there. But those are things that, you know, those are good discussion points for governments and industry to have. Metal Farming Magazine recently hosted a webinar with Simpac on the extended reality or XR tool uh, and how it's really going to change metal farming business practices in the future. Uh, so you want to give us a demo of how the uh, how the XR tool actually works? Well, absolutely. So um, if we take a look at the tool itself, we wanted to do something that was as user friendly as possible. So we did something that was based on either an iPad or on a cell phone. What you would then do is when you touch the pad itself, you can explode out the uh, press. For instance, what we got for an example, which we're going to be showing, is the CX press. What this helps us do is it helps us for more remote buy-offs, remote service, and also as a sales tool to show the customer all the different driving parts of the, uh, um, of the XR technology together with the press. When you able, you're able to then touch a specific part, that part number will, uh, the, uh, once you touch that part, the number and the identification of that part will come up. We will then be able to, in our next, um, in our next phase, be able to help uh, purchasing 
either order that part or review to see if that part is needed. Our technical manager, Mitchell, right here is just showing you a couple little functions that we have on the press. Okay, this basically shows the different controllers. This shows some of the functions that we did. This isn't the end version. This is just phase one that we were able to uh, bring out for from the people here at Fabtech. But what it does is it shows all the different interactiveness that we can do. Um, obviously, this will be um, in multiple languages. It'll be obviously uh, set up in Korean, English, and of course, if it's uh, down in uh, Mexico and Spanish, um, or we can have it in French or Italian, depending on uh, the, uh, the company. Can metal formers use the XR tool on existing and maybe older presses in addition to the newer press systems coming from? Okay, well, um, what we're showing here with the XR technology is definitely for all of the new presses, whether it be the CX or the MC2 or the DTE or the DTL series presses, or even our servo press designs. All of the new presses being sold will have the option of that XR technology. As you're aware, we had a little bit of a crazy year last year. Mm -hmm. And of course, we had a whole bunch of different presses that we had to um, buy off uh, out of Korea. Mm -hmm. What we now can do is based on all of the new generation presses and of course, some of the existing presses that we have, we'll then be able to blow up the image of that press. We'll be able to have a split screen where we'll then be able to show um, the actual press uh, at the floor in Korea and so a person can have a virtual walkthrough. So that means in the future, we don't need to have four or five or six people go to Korea. Um, what we're trying to do is we're looking at health and safety. I don't think for instance that, um, you know, this pandemic, this one in a hundred year pandemic is the only time we're going to have something in our lifetime. How has SIMPAC been handling service maintenance and just kind of overall business practices throughout the pandemic? Um, and what's kind of been the, the key to the company's success uh, during these strenuous times? Well, I can tell you, Brad, it was a nightmare. I mean, we had, so in, in February of last year, I went to Korea for a buy-off with a customer for a press. And literally during the time we were there in Korea, the COVID rates went from two to three a day to all of a sudden a thousand a day. And everybody started freaking out. And then everything shut down as we all saw here in the United States as well. We had five other press systems, whether they be individual presses or lines that had to be bought off in Korea and then shipped to North America. And when we saw what we were doing, we were taking pictures and videos and sending them, the, you know, the huge files. And then everybody would, the next day would have a meeting on it. And then we would say, okay, we need this, this, and this. We were doing a buy off for an entire press system that would take several weeks. It was crazy. There had to be a better way. And that is one of the reasons why we now have this XR technology. I mean, Jamie personally found this technology for us. Okay, so I mean, I have to give credit where credit is due. And our inside sales and marketing manager did an incredible job there. So one of the things that we've succeeded in doing in able to service our customers better, in order to work with our customers better, in order to do everything better, is this XR technology that we're talking about. Because now what I can do is I can do remote buy-offs. I can do remote discussions with customers. I can do pretty much everything I want on a tablet or on an iPhone. And everybody has a tablet or an iPhone these days. Right. We wanted to make something as user friendly as possible. So the real, real hard worker that might or might not have graduated from high school is able to use it. The engineer that has got 12 years worth of engineering experience in school and also in multiple companies is gonna be super excited with it because it's gonna be as simple or as complicated as they want it to be. And so that's one of the things that we've been doing working forward. And that's why we're highlighting the XR technology here today. Very good. Very good. Thank you, Stefan. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, well, thank you very much, Brad. It's an absolute pleasure. Um, really looking forward to Fabtech and seeing how the show uh, works out for everybody today. Excellent. Have a good show. Thanks a lot.